Hello, everybody. Welcome to Transition Church. I want to say I'm so happy that you're here with us, spending your time. And so, guess what? We're going to dive right in. So let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. We just ask, Lord, you just minister to us, Lord God. Help us to discern between lie and truth, Lord God, so we can live in more freedom in our life. We just thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. In Jesus' my name, amen. So today, I'm going to talk to you about what? Myth, truth. Two different things, two different sides of the spectrum. But how do we discern between a lie and a truth? So today we're going to read from 1 John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now that, that's lo located in 1 John 1, 9. So let's, let's take sin, okay? Now, sin was mentioned in this scripture several times. So sin, what is sin? Now, in our minds, we're like, okay, everything that's bad is sin. Um, when you do something against somebody else, it's sin. Or, or, or if, if, if I have a bad thought, that's sin. Well, let's break down what sin is. Sin is rejecting or ignoring God in the world he created, rebelling against him by living without reference to him, not being or doing what he requires in his law, resulting in our death and the disintegration of all creation. That is what sin is, all in a big giant nutshell. That's sin. So think about this. Anything that you're trying to do to please you is sin. So if I see somebody with some brand new Jordans and I'm like, do it, I want them Jordans. So I beat him up. I take his Jordans because I want it. Guess what? That's sin. Or if I covet something of somebody else's, that's sin. If I tell a lie to somebody for my own benefit, that's sin. Well, what do you mean? Like if I tell a lie to keep myself out of trouble, that's sin. It benefits me. It's all about me, not about you. So in your mind, you will literally think it's all about me, not about you, because you're a dirtbag. Oh, that's sin. As clear as day, it's sin. But the thing is this, let's, let's go into where does the myth or the lie and where's the truth. So let's find out. Here's a scenario. Here's a story. Guess what? Me and my friend, we want something to eat. Um, and so we're going to walk to the store, right? So we put on our little rain jackets and everything like that. And, and we put on, you know, our little galoshes and all that stuff. And we start to walk towards the store. So we're walking, you know, we just left the house. And, and we're walking down the street. And all of a sudden, I trip and fall. Man, I'm, I hit the ground so hard, I literally bounced, scraped my knee. Oh, I'm, I'm in pain and everything like that. But then, all of a sudden, I poof, I literally disappear. Where did I go? I, all I know is I tripped, I fell, scraped my knee, bounced off the ground like a basketball, and then I disappeared. A big cloud of smoke appeared, and then I, whoop, oh man, I'm back at the house. Wow. Okay, I'm back at the house. So that means that I got to start all over again by walking to the store. But I realize that every time I do that, every time I attempt to go towards the store, I trip and fall, and then I end up back at the house. So I try this several times, 20, 30 times. I get discouraged, right? Because guess what? Every time I trip and fall, I'm going to land at the house. I'll never make it to the store. Well, I'm just going to sit on the porch. Just sit on the porch, not moving, not doing anything. Well, in that story, a lot of times we look at and live our lives spiritually in that way. The lie. The lie is that every time I mess up, every time I fail, I have to start all over at the beginning. Meaning I'm, I'm a baby Christian all over again. Why would anybody want to go after God if that's the case? If, if I know that I'm not perfect, I know I'm not perfect. And yet, 
I want to walk with Jesus, but every time I fail, I'm going to start, have to start all over. Well, then I wouldn't want to start all over. I'll just be fine just doing what I'm doing. That's the lie. What's the truth? The truth is I don't disappear or I don't have to start all over at, at a baby Christian all over when I fail. I start where I left off. So if I was, uh, if I told a lie, boom, you know, just right off the bat. Well, I just told a lie. I guess I got to go back and start being a baby Christian again. No. Hey, man, I'm sorry. I just told a lie. And here's the truth. What I'm doing is I'm turning my back on the lie, on the sin. Not a, uh, a 360 turn. No, I'm not going back to the sin. It's a 180 turn. I'm going and turning my back away from the sin, and I'm moving forward. So if we break down it, we're all going to sin. We all are going to sin. We're all going to mess up. We're all going to fail. Sometimes, some way. We're all going to have a bad day. Somehow, some way. There's no getting away from it. We were born with a sinful nature. Born in it. You don't have to teach a kid how to lie. You don't have to teach a kid how to punch another kid. You don't have to teach a kid how to be greedy and selfish. You don't have to teach them how to do none of that stuff. Why? Because we're born with a sinful nature. But if we take that sin and we, that we commit and we repent from it, turn our back on it, and move forward in living, we're finishing the race. We're continually on the race that God has set before us. That's the truth. You don't start all over at the beginning, at the starting line. No. You stand up, you dust yourself off, and you move forward. You admit, okay, yeah, I messed up. I got jacked up. Yeah, I understand. But I'm, I'm going to move forward. Yeah, that sin might bring me, uh, you know, some pain. That sin might hurt me. That sin might have harmed me. And I now have to run with the limp. But the thing is this, is I'm moving forward. Lesson learned. Watch out for that and moving forward. So you get up and you start where you left off. You don't start at the beginning. You don't become a baby Christian all over again every time you fail. No, no. You're still in the same place as you are, but the devil wants you to think that you start all over. No, you don't start all over. No. So, in this scripture, James 5.16, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James 5.16. So with this scripture, I want to just give you a quote. What makes a righteous man is not how many times he falls, but how quickly he gets back up. Let me say that again. What makes a righteous man is not how many times he fails, but how quickly he gets back up. Hmm. So in this scripture, it says confess your sin, right? Confessing my sin to somebody. Well, there's a th several things we need to be aware of. Because if I just go to anybody in the church and be like, hey, man, you know, I have a problem with, uh, you know, I have a problem with lust. Well, guess what? That doesn't work. Because then you become around the, the main uh, subject in the gossip column. A lot of times we have prayer meetings, right? And a lot of these prayer meetings aren't prayer meetings. They're gossip sessions. Hey, I just heard that Paul is dealing with lust. And so, um, yeah, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, he has, he's, it's, everybody wants to talk about the dirt. No, that's not healthy. That's not healthy at all. So there's three things you, well, you need to look for. If you're going to confess your sins to somebody, three things you need to look for. One, are they spiritually healthy? What do you mean by spiritually healthy? Do they understand Forgiveness, do they understand repentance, and do they understand growth? Well, you know, I, I don't know. Because, see, I could go confess my sins to somebody, everybody, like, oh my goodness, you did what? Oh, wait a second. Don't, don't be around that person. Well, that person's an elder. <laughs> Run. They're not spiritually healthy. They don't understand what the Word of God says. If you confess your sins, you know, 
they, it brings healing. So, are they spiritually healthy? Two, are you, are they in your best interest? Do they want to see growth? Or are they just trying to hold you down and be like, hey, I know his sin, I know his dirt, and do you know what? He's a, he's a dirt bag. He, he, he'll never become anything. We'll never put him in a church position ever because of what he deals with or what he has dealt with. They, they're not for your best interest. They're not about you. So, so find somebody who's spiritually healthy. Find somebody who's about you, who's going to help you grow. You know, as this, this slide shows, you know, it's a lady who comes to the doctor. The lady's about her best interest because she needs healing. The doctor's about his best interest because he's there to heal. And guess what? The person behind the counter is the one who's actually saying, hey, I'm going to put this in your file so we know what happened and so we can help you later on. They're about their best interest. Prayer. Is that person about praying for you? Not sharing what you've done to everybody, but for praying with you, you and that person. That's the person to be around. That's the person to confess to. And then there's accountability. So if I, if I was dealing with something, you know, that person would be like, hey, man, how are you doing, man? How's God working in your life? Ah, uh, man, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with it a little bit, but I, I failed a little bit, but, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. And well, if you, if you, if that comes up, you know, just give me a call. Give me a call. I'm, I'll, I'm there. I'm there to help you. I'm here to help you grow, man. I'm here to keep you accountable. Not accountability as in, ooh, you did wrong. I can't believe you. You're fired. No. Man, it's okay. God has forgiveness for you. Let's move on. Let's push forward, but let's grow. Those are the three things that we need to look for before we just confess our sins. So there's the flesh and there's the spirit. Two things that we deal with, okay? In Galatians 5, 24 through 25. 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Verse 25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So let's look at the two difference. Flesh, well, there's, you know, Galatians 19, 21, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, uh, you know, there's a whole list of what um, flesh is. Whole list of them. I'm not going to go through them right now. But you can look them up at Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Gives you a list of what the flesh is. Anything that's here to give and feed your desire. What do you mean? You know, I like fishing and stuff like that. Well, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about stuff that you want to feed your desire that's going to hurt you in the long run. Self-gratification. It'll either hurt you right then or in the long run. That's flesh. But then in the spirit, there, there's Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And it talks about the fruits of the spirit. Those fruits should be evitable or, or known in us if we're walking with Christ. People should see those fruits. And those fruits should be ginormous. But we have to understand, we still deal with the flesh. That's what this race is all about. Those, not the fast one who, who, who wins the race, is the one who endures. So, in this whole time, or in this lesson, I, I just want you to understand that there's people out there who is there to help you. And you don't start all over when you fail. You start where you ended, or when you left off. That's where you start. Okay? So, in this... So let's pray. So dear me, Father, thank you for today. We ask you, Lord, for your servants, for your sons and your daughters, Lord God, who have believed the lie. We ask you, Lord, you reveal to them the truth, that you're there with them 24-7, 365. You're there for them to help them grow, to help them be successful, to help them to walk in freedom. We thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. 
we ask Lord, you continue to show them the things of the flesh that they need to deal with so they can walk more in the spirit. We ask you, Lord, for anybody who wants to repent or who, who wants to surrender right now, just repeat after me. Say, God, I'm done. I quit. I give up. I'm through. I no longer own me. You own me. Teach me. Guide me. Show me what you want me to do. And I'll do it for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I surrender. We'll see you guys next week.